Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott. Hey, yo. He's got his younger brother. It's going to be Jeff. The cream rise to the top. Oh, yeah. And you're listening to all of the great action figures from our good friends at Hasbro. The fully postable. Have your own WrestleMania with all your favorite figures. Wrestling figure. He sold separately from LJN. Podcast. And we are the Mount Rushmore of professional <laughs> wrestling. Hey, welcome to episode 441 of the Fully Posable Wrestling Figure Podcast. Longest running episodic wrestling figure podcast going today. My name is Jeff and St. Louis. Next to me is my real life brother, not storyline brother, Scott. Scott, say hello. Hello. I apologize, guys. I am a little congested. The winds have picked up with 96 degree heat out here with no air conditioning, and I'm a little messed up. So deal with it this week. You caught the mange. I did. Dude totally hanging out with you mage <laughs> main city i spread it nicely you spread it like COVID, dude <laughs> hell yeah dude uh th- this week we have scott's tag team partner big josh on the show yeah we're gonna kind of change up the guest list a little bit um you know normally it's grown-ass men talking figures and sometimes women in the case of sheena um, but this week we're gonna change it up and big josh is gonna come on the show and i clarified last week uh big josh is nine so jeff that's let's see you were when you got into wrestling you were around six years old five you were five so big josh has been into it for about four three or four years so you guys age-wise got into wrestling around the same time um so by my math that puts big josh's uh birth year in 2015 which is the first year that roman headlined wrestlemania and Roman Reigns is his favorite wrestler. I thought that that was very appropriate. So anyway, we are going to have Big Josh, the nine-year-old wrestling and wrestling figure fanatic on the show here shortly. Big Josh, nine years old. Jeff, maturity level, nine years old. <laughs> You're giving yourself too much credit. That's actually true. Way too much. You're adding a few years there, dude. That's actually true. <laughs> Stuck at five. <laughs> Scott, what else is going on, dude? Uh, let's see. I'm heading for Vegas tomorrow. We're recording a little bit early this week, but, uh, we're on the road to Vegas tomorrow morning, probably about 5 AM packing up the kids, packing up the big dance bags and some luggage and off we go. We'll be in Vegas for a week. You've got to strap on the leotard. Well, <laughs> you got to strap on the leotard and other things. So you're heading to Vegas, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'll wear my, uh, my little leotard that I have. It's <laughs> leopard print for the record. <laughs> it's adorable. Oh. It's a little snug in certain parts, but uh, it wears nicely. It's and comfy. Does it show off your tattoo that you wanted on your butt? It does. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can't really make out the whole C and the whole first T, but you get the idea. Yeah, but the O is right there, if you know what we mean. Didn't need to pay extra for that O to get it tattooed on. Yep. I was born with it. <laughs> if anybody would like to get it's cool a nine-year-old's coming on and he's gonna hear this <laughs> and we're talking about buttholes already yeah I starting know. off well yeah he's... we're swinging for the fences folks <laughs> <laughs> strong show coming your way sorry maturity level eight years old now <laughs> it's dipping uh, it's fallen by the second <laughs> if you'd like to get any of our shirts head on over to pro wrestling tees or what a maneuver dot net you can follow us on the twitter x youtube snapchat and the book of faces at fully opposable instagram fully opposable w f p you can go back and listen to any of our past podcasts on podbean stitcher itunes iHeartRadio, and spotify please rate review and subscribe on itunes and you can send us any audio questions, questions, or anything else at all. Send on over to fully posable WFP at gmail.com. Scott, I'm still putting together the guest list for August for the people that would like to come onto the show. Is it filling up quickly? Uh, we've got a couple dates left. I think like late August, we have a few dates open. So if anybody wants to come on, just hit us up in the DMs or text me. Or if you are friends with me on Facebook, hit me up in the messenger. We'll get you plugged in. But it's funny, back-to-back weeks, Travis Fowler and then Justin Summers, your two arch nemesis for yeah. uh, the, ta- the Taco Bells. Yeah, we're going to uh, we're gonna put the boxing gloves on. We're going to have some words. And we're going to see by the end of the episode if I'm able to sway them 
But, uh, you know, much like politics, when you get into a conversation about this empanada versus Mexi-Melt thing, kind of hard to sway the other person's opinion. But uh, like I said on Facebook, at the end of it, we're all still friends. It's all good. Wait, still friends? I thought you were in a throat punch, everybody. No, no, no. Uh, I'll give them quite cross looks is what I'm going to do, Jeff. I need Steve Hoker to put a Photoshop meme of you on Oprah, and it's like you get a throat punch and you get a throat (laughs) punch. I need something like that. So, well, he already put out the I'm a Mexi Melt guy shirt. Oh, did he? And the end M, M is in Mark, M W O, Empanada World Order shirt. <laughs> and those can be found on T Public. Search out Starman and Jay's store, and you can get yourself an I'm a Mexi Melt guy shirt. I think they're holding Fourth of July sales, dude. I think you need one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. At least a tank top if they'll do it. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, I am a Mexi Melt guy. That's that's me through and through, man. That's uh, that's my comfort food. It's my chicken soup for the soul, as they say. We need I'm a Mexican pizza guy. I'm a yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a McRib. We get that would be worn like what? Once every two years or something like that. (laughs) I'm a McRib. No, no, no. That's supposed to be permanently retired now. Oh, that's right. They did, huh? That's supposed to be long gone. Yeah. But you could try for like old Taco Bell items like uh, the Choco Taco or the seven layer burrito. Yeah. Chili cheese burrito. Yeah. Bacon ranch, chicken chalupa, yeah. things of this nature that were delicious uh-huh. that they just pulled off uh-huh. the menu. You want to keep going? Uh-huh. uh-huh. The enchurito. Oh, yeah. With Enchur- the olives on top. Olives. Yeah. Oh, give mm-hmm. us all the olives. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop, dude, because uh, you're going to lose your train of thought here in a second. <laughs> it's already lost, dude. <laughs> it's not in a second. That's a, like 10 minutes ago, folks. It's a short week and I've already lost all thought process. But anyways. Yes. Yes. Long weekend coming up. Got to love it lucky scott have you picked up anything recently i have picked up nothing beautiful yep absolutely nothing i'm oh. uh, i'm kind of saving the wallet heat a little bit oh i had a uh, jeff senior moment recently oh why did you forget that you got something yes got home last friday i think it was anyways drive up sure enough box on the porch it's from amazon and i was like Man, I haven't placed my order for my Amazon because what I kind of do is I develop a cart. Okay. And w- usually around payday, I'll click submit and then I'll yep. just get everything in my cart. So, yep. Anyways, I was like, man, I haven't ordered anything from Amazon. I'm like, eh, that's kind of confusing. So, you know, get home, plug everything in, you know, all that stuff, get, go outside, pick up the box, and it's light as a feather. Thinking, okay, this is a figure. Like, I already mm-hmm. know what a figure feels like when you pick yeah. up that bo- Amazon box. Yes, a figure equals light as a feather. This is this is an accurate unit of measure. Yes. So I pick it up, and I'm like, this is already a figure, but I didn't order a figure off Amazon, so I pop it open. I guess I had gotten the Terry Gordy figure, which I I'm thought not... thought you already had it. I thought I did too, but I went looking in the room, and I was like, oh, I guess I don't have it. So <laughs> I got a Terry Gordy figure from Amazon that I don't even remember ordering. <laughs> that was your old self taking care of your future self. I guess so. Um, and to to backpedal just a few steps, um, I did actually order something, but I don't want to spoil it until you get to the news because I want to kind of save my excitement. Um, I will say, you know exactly which one I'm talking about. Um, you're gonna I will be making, say, you're gonna be making the heavy breathing noises when we get to that segment. Yes, we will. We will, Jeff. I know you are too. Um. I, I am on the fence. I'm holding out on the Junkyard Dog Power Town Ultra Series 2. What? I know. It's 50 bucks, dude. Like, I'm like. Yes. And it's a great JYD, dude. It's it's amazing. But the problem is, too, is those Matt Maniac LODs. We'll get into those in the news and as well. Yes, we will. But, I mean, those have a pretty hefty price tag. On top of that, 50 bucks for JYD. And, yes, it's outstanding as a Mid-South title with it. The chain, it's got the baby blue tights. Everything about it is, yes, I want this figure. But between the Powertown Ultra 2, Junkyard Dog, the Matt Maniacs LOD, I mean, you're talking after shipping and everything, it's like a buck 50, dude. Yeah, just do it. (laughs) Dude, I'm not understanding Uh. what the problem is. I know, I know, but still, it's it's a lot of money, dude. Dude, just go to Vegas and win money, dude. That's all you got to do. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm actually. I'm trying to keep selling things, but like getting ready to go to Vegas, I didn't want to have stuff waiting to be shipped when I got home. So I'll start that up after. If if eBay sales go well, I'll probably go ahead and order that Matt Maniacs and the JYD. I actually meant to ask you, how is your eBay sales going? 
uh, that round is done. Uh, did really well. So now I'm going to start blowing through more of the Joe stuff. I've only sold two things so far. Um, so I'm going to start moving the Joe figures here when I get back from Vegas. Okay. And then we'll see what comes in from those. And again, this isn't done because I enjoy flipping figures. In fact, I hate it. Um, I don't like it at all. But it's a necessary evil when you're kind of like trying to shave down not only the size of your collection a little bit, but also kind of reprioritizing uh, where your collecting dollars are going to go. And all of those funds are paying off figures I've already bought, in addition to funding future figures that are going to be coming in. For example, the Matt Maniacs LOD and the Power Town Ultra Series 2 Junkyard Dog. Well, if you think about it, dude, like when you get into a collection, you're not getting into it for the resale value. You think you, you have all these grand all. plans with these figures. Like, yeah. like you did with the Joes. You're like, oh, I'm going to get Detolfs and I'm going to put them up here and they're going to go over in this shelf and blah, 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 blah. Right. But when you get those Detolfs and you start kind of prioritizing everything that's going into said Detolfs. Yeah sometimes it doesn't always work out as planned and then it's one of those okay now they're just taking up space so exactly yes so i completely understand dude but i mean i know you're into flipping figures but i mean i understand dude okay. <laughs> yeah it's it's totally a space issue you're exactly right you start filling the detolf and you're like oh crap i don't have as much room as i thought i did yep so i'm gonna keep a few you know, because G.I. Joe is always going to be near and dear to my heart. There's going to be a few that I keep like Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, the twins, miscellaneous other ones, probably Shipwreck. Um, but for the most part, that the collection's going to just it's going to dwindle down. I've got to clear up the space for it. Um, so that's just that's the way it's being done. And so it's space. It's it's prior reprioritizing my figure collections and money that was spent previously and upcoming funds that are going to be shelled out because man, we got comic-con right around the corner. So I know there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out of that. I'm pretty sure that pre-order dates are going to be hot and heavy over July, August. So yeah, I'm just kind of prepping my wallet a little bit for the heat that's coming in. And on top of that, I don't know if you've seen, but there are some people that are pulling autograph Jimmy Garvin cards. Oh, really? I'm just saying. Uh, well, I mean, I'm an out on the cards, dude. Like, I can't. No, I know. No, I know. Yeah. But I'm kind of like, oh, is said Jimmy Garvin available? If he is, I really hope that we get two versions of him. A free bird and gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. That's what I want, dude. If we could get a gorgeous Jimmy Garvin, like his world class look, his NWA look, that would just be phenomenal. And then if on top of that, we got a gorgeous Jimmy to go with a Michael Hayes i.e. we're going to be talking about a tag team coming up in an ultimate set if we can get an ultimate set free birds with the tag titles with the sunglasses the colorful tights the jackets oh man you're you're talking my language at that point look i'll say i'll say this as of right now in the figure collecting world never say never but those nwa tag titles i don't think mattel will be doing they did the nwa heavyweight title but that NWA tag title that Jimmy and Michael Hayes carried, I don't think. I thought that they had the WCW tag titles, like what came with uh, the Hollywood Blonde Stone Cold. No, they carried those uh, NWA tag titles like Ricky and Robert and the Midnight Express and the Road Warriors had that blue. The one I got autographed down below. The blue title. Yeah, they carried those. They didn't carry the WCW because in 1993, if I'm not mistaken, uh, somebody's going to have to fact check me on timeline on this, but I think it was... Zabisco and Anderson had the WCW tag titles and then they went to Austin and Pillman and then they the blue were, straps, the blue straps. And then they started carrying the NWA and WCW tag titles at the same time. And then they eventually went to the WCW tag titles full time. It's almost like they eliminated the NWA tag title. So I'd have to remember the time frame on that. Anyways, they, I mean, if you want to do it, put the WCW tag titles in there with them. That's fine. But it's well, the not... Freebirds won the tag titles in 90. Right. But those were the NWA tag titles. Those were the blue strap. In 1993 is when they switched over to that new style WCW tag titles that Hall and Nash wore, the Blondes wore. Okay, but what is what belt has Mattel done already? Mattel didn't do the blue strap? No, they didn't do that one. They did the uh, 1993 and on WCW tag titles. Oh, title. got it. Okay, so we haven't gotten the blue strap tag titles yet. Not the blue strap. Uh, those belts okay. have those belts have been made, but they were with 
uh, uh, TNA, NWA TNA, when the uh, American was the most wanted came out. And they were kind of like, okay. a, they were kind of cheaply done, but they were close ish. So, okay, got it. Well, you know what? I'm going to hold out hope that we got that NWA heavyweight title. And I'm going to hold out hope because we got that. We're going to get those WCW blue straps. I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best. And also, while they're at it, give us a butch read to go with Ron Simmons for Doom. Thank you. If, if thoughts and prayers on that one too, dude. But Butch Reed has not been popping up in cards. Jimmy Garvin has. So that's a good sign. Hey, I mean, I'm I'm not expecting everything, but if you could just kind of hit me like Salt Bay with a little sprinkle in action here and there and throw in a gorgeous Jimmy Garvin, I'll take it. Hold on, 2016-17 is calling. You reference Salt Bay. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, that's not a thing anymore. Hold on. Oh, cool. Christian Yelich hit a home run. Um Yay. Uh, I'm sorry, Scott. Uh, 2016, 2017 was uh, Salt Bay. Is that correct? Uh, hold on. Okay, so you're insulting the age of something. Uh, our show was born in 2016, dude. Come on now. God damn it! You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, we're... 2016 called, and it was awesome. <laughs> it was the birth. <laughs> it was the birth of us. Right. Right. Well, so to speak. Yes. Yes. Well. As the listeners know it, anyway. Second coming. Oh no, no. <sighs> I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's get into the news. Funko. There's going to be a Fanatics exclusive and it's Umaga. He'll have the red tights on. Fan Fanatics. Sorry. I almost said Fan Addicts. Fan Addicts. Fan Addicts exclusive is going to be a Funko Umaga. So speaking of Umaga, Bloodline, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. We always talk about the Mount Rushmore of moments in wrestling that kind of changed the course, or as I always call it, lightning in a bottle, right? You had Hulkamania being born, 84. You had the NWO and Stone Cold Steve Austin slash Austin 316 born in 96. Those were like the, the two big wrestling booms that I've seen happen in my lifetime. Wrestling, as we've talked about on the show, Jeff, is starting to hit that 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 high spot again, right? Like it's coming back. Everybody's talking about wrestling. It's mainstream. It's popular. The numbers are getting better. Um, it's becoming a worldwide phenomenon again. Wrestling is. So we have the birth of Hulkamania, Austin 316 slash NWO. Could you consider this boom bloodline? That's where it stemmed from, right? That's exactly where I'm going with this. Could you call this boom bloodline? The bloodline era, the bloodline boom. We gotta coin this. I mean, you you could coin it, but I'm I'm really like like you said, that is where all of this this boom is stemming from. Was that bloodline storyline that's still ongoing today, and it's been hot and heavy for what three four years now? Yeah, like Roman, his name is gonna be up there when you discuss Hogan. And you discuss Austin, which are two names we just dropped in the wrestling booms that have happened. You've got to put Roman's name in. I mean, if it starts to hit those heights, 84, 96 through 98, 99, whenever that Attitude Era boom was, to now, if it starts to hit those same heights, you've got to call it the Roman or the Bloodline Era, right? I would assume so, yes. Yeah, I mean, Cody's going to have to really put a huge stamp on this thing to get his name mentioned. I don't want to take anything away from what he's done with his story, but dude, this whole Roman and bloodline thing has been incredible. And you've got to think they're owed a huge uh, debt of gratitude for what they've done for the sport. I mean, yeah, it's all booking, right? But those guys have to play their roles perfectly. And after everything that went down Friday night with the bloodline, putting Heyman through a table and you can almost see like the war games match bloodline feud happening. It's still going on and there's still a lot of meat to chew off of this bone. So, dude, it's it's crazy. And I'm just thinking you've got to put Roman's name in there now with Hogan and Austin. If, if the numbers start to hit what it was, 84, 96, got to attribute it to Roman, I'm thinking. All right, real quick. But what's crazy? Roman wasn't even on TV every week. Didn't need to be. Hogan would be on at least cutting a promo or, you know, something like that. Austin would be on every week. Roman wasn't on every week. Didn't need him to be. He had Jimmy and Jay 
and Sammy to an extent and Paul Heyman carrying that workload for him when he wasn't there. And those guys were good enough to keep fans invested until Roman showed up for the pay-per-views. That's how good that squad is. And now you got to think they've only multiplied the bloodline and it's only going to get better. Like I dude, I'm super excited to see where this goes on top of that. I've got predictions that we're going to discuss with uh, big Josh when he comes on later in the show. Cause he and I were talking Friday night about what's going to be going on with the bloodline moving forward. And I've got some ideas, some theories, some fan booking, if you will, Jeff. All right. I'm interested. I'm interested in this. By the way, did you see the misfits are getting I did. He-Man I did. style figures, dude? Y- yes. Uh, Super 7 is making them. And it's uh, Sam Hain, Danzig, a bloody version, no less. And yeah, misfits style figures. They're 30 bucks. And as I said in the Facebook chat group earlier, I like the Misfits. I don't love the Misfits. To spend $30 on a He-Man style Misfits figure, I would have to love the Misfits. But Steve Hoker so eloquently put, yeah, but what if they made Papa from Ghost? (laughs) To which I replied, absolutely, yes, 100% would purchase. (laughs) Of course you would. Well. I will say Super 7 always does a great job on the Papa figures. They do an excellent job on on the Papa Ultimates. They kill it. They absolutely kill it. There's another one that just dropped that, of course, I pre-ordered as soon as it came out. And yeah, I'm, I will always support Super 7's Ghost Line. Absolutely. But the Misfits, uh, 30 bucks a pop's a little hefty for me. I'm still waiting for Guar figures. <laughs> Are you really? I am. Yeah, Trick or Treat Studios has them, and they just haven't put out any uh, order info on them yet. Got it. Yeah, still waiting. All right, let's move on to Zombie Sailor. He had a 4th of July figure come out. It's the Sandman. He's in American gear when Sandman used to wear the Zubas. American Zubas, I should say. There's an elite coming out of that pretty soon, right? A chase? Sure is. Yeah. It is the Zombies, not Mattel's, is limited to 1,776. Creative. Very creative. Very creative. He does come with a can of beer. This figure went on sale this past Thursday on the 4th of July. And if you ordered it, it comes with a bonus print. And that bonus print is Sandman a la Hulk Hogan from WrestleMania 7. It was. Yeah. Holding the American flag. Yep. So that will be the print. So if you pre-order this, it is limited to 1,776 and it's up for pre-order right now. I think he comes with a cane as well, Jeff. Oh yeah. That's a cane and a can of beer. Can of beer and a cane. You're right. You're right. You're right. Great looking retro figure. I do like it. I'm again with Sandman. I'm not a huge Sandman fan, but you got to respect the figure and uh, I think it's outstanding. Yeah. All right, time to talk about some Matt Maniacs. Matt Maniacs, those retro style figures that are absolutely gorgeous. They come in two packs as of right now. It's the Steiner Brothers and the Road Warriors. Looking forward to these. Pricing will be $64.99. So if you price it out, $32.50 per figure. Don't know what the shipping or, t- you know, obviously we're going hit, to get hit on taxes, especially out here in California. Uh, but if you order all four figures or both tag team sets, it will be $119.99 for all four. That's a little hefty. 65 bucks, dude. Again, between that and the junkyard dog being 50, it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand what you're having the problem with. <laughs> Sell more Joe's. Get on that. Hop up. So, <laughs> gotta- I mean, I'm expecting the sale to go pretty well on those. But again, we'll see. You know, I should know within the next month or so, hopefully, you know, they're still up for pre-order. The Power Towns Ultra Series 2 are still up. I, I'll, I'll most likely, I'm like 98.99% sure that I'll be putting an order in on those. No, you're 99.99%. You got a Yankees belt back there. <laughs> Sell that off. Let's go. Chop, chop. Ah, uh, the hell no. Come on now. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> got a Bailey autograph belt. Sell that. Let's go. You got figures. <laughs> How dare to- you, sir? You got figures to buy. Chop, chop. Let's go. I think we've all got untouchables in our collection, right? Count that amongst two of my untouchables. All right. What about your Batman collection? Like you like that. Absolutely not. See, Scott, you're not that big of a Road Warriors fan. Come on now. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. What? You won't get rid of the How belt? How dare you? I'll have you thrown out of here. Can't be that big of a fan if you won't get rid of some belts and Batman. I mean, come on, Scott. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're killing me. Sorry. Next yeah. piece of news. Get out of here. All right. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> being a prick. <laughs> You are being a where are those crows? <laughs> I don't Come know. Come carry him away. Justin Summers wants him back and I'm trying to shoo him away, dude. I'm like, oh <laughs> Justin Summers. You put those like, spikes on the roof. I do. I do. All right. So I just put a massage parlor down the street and they were like, All right, we're out. <laughs> it's quite the diversion. Well done. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> Business license aren't cheap, but it, it paid off in the end, you know, to have them around. It's, but it's anyway. weird. These singles keep falling from the sky. I don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> All right. Major Pod announced their San Diego Comic Con exclusive. First off, Big Rubber Guy will be a bloody Ric Flair. Only 1,000 are available. Goes on sale July 22nd at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is a bloody Ric Flair. He'll be in the purple trunks, bloody head. He's got his uh, blonde crop top all bloodied up. So that is the San Diego Comic-Con Big Rubber Guy. Looks like he just walked out of a title match with Dusty Rhodes in 1986. Yep. Perfect looking figure, dude. Absolutely. Per- like would look just amazing next to your uh, big rubber guy, Dusty. Yep. On top of that as well for San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, they also announced their major Bendy San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. It'll be Macho Man. It is the look from his CD release when he had the chains all wrapped around him and he cut a promo on Hulk Hogan or he put a diss track. He was Eminem before Eminem. Right, right, right. Be a man, Hogan. Yeah, he put a diss track on Hogan. Uh, only 500 of these available. So that will be Major yeah. Bendy's Major Bendy's uh, non-Big Rubber guy, Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, pretty sweet, dude. That's I, that's really doing kind of a deep dive, and I love that when companies do that for San Diego Comic-Con. Like something that's kind of out of the box a little bit, like Macho Man from a CD cover. Who would have guessed that? That's That's amazing. All right, Scott, time to put on your nursing flaps. It's time to go talking about Power Town. <laughs> My favorite. So we did record early with Breaker last week, and we had to, uh, well, since we recorded early, we didn't have the full renderings of the other two figures in their Ultra Series 2. Well, that eventually did come out, and it's Medusa. She'll be in her American gear. A lot of American gear is America, you know? Well, it's July, dude. Independence Month. Yeah, it's like Christmas in July right but not red and green red white and blue i wish it was christmas right now dude it's too goddamn hot out here i know i know can i hurry up already please? i know i know i want to get back down to the 50s again i don't like 117 <laughs> i, I really know. don't uh she will be in her american gear two interchangeable heads and she will come with an all japan women's wrestling people's championship belt so that will be the medusa figure on top of that they also showed off kamala he will come with the spear the shield and Kamala's mask. Those will all be in ultra series two. And that rounds it out with chief Wahoo McDaniel, junkyard dog, Dory junk, Dory junk, <laughs> Dory's Dory, Dory junk. How dare Dory, you? Dory's junk. <laughs> Dory's <laughs> Dory's junior junk. <laughs> Boy, it's a good thing. Uh, big Josh isn't on right now, um, <laughs> but it comes with Dory funks junk. And <laughs> and uh jack Br- jack briscoe yeah yeah yeah. yep or J- yeah it's a solid assortment um yeah we recorded early last week and of course the next day all of this amazing news dropped and it was like damn it of course it's it's always the day after but yeah we weren't able to talk about the final kamala shown this has got to be up there with the elite legends right if not a little better right it's outstanding i mean holy crap all the accessories that come with it the figure looks amazing. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from the Medusa. That one looks really good too, but the Kamala, holy crap. So now I'm thinking maybe I'm not just ordering JYD for this set. Maybe I got to get Kamala too. Oh, so you are getting Kamala. I think so. If I order JYD, I'm getting Kamala too. Okay. All right. But then I'm like, man, the Wahoo McDaniel looks really good. Mm-hmm. I like his title belt, the headdress, the whole figure just is dead on Wahoo. Ugh. No, I got to keep it at two. Okay. So if I order JYD, I'm getting Kamala too. Okay. Uh, they did show off just a couple hours ago. They showed off the U.S. title. It is not the traditional U.S. title that a lot of us remember from Magnum TA and Nikita Koloff. It is actually right. like a thinned out, almost similar to the NWA heavyweight title that 
uh, came with the Christian figure, the Harley race figure, kind of similar to that, but it says United States championship on it. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool looking belt. And that's one thing that power town is getting known for is their title belts. Yeah. They're outstanding. You weren't making noises during that, Scott. Uh, well, it's thunder got kind of stolen a little bit by your next announcement. I'm interested to see what you thought of this, but Mattel finally announced. And of course this came out like the following day or next two days, whatever it is after we recorded. <laughs> yeah. All this amazing news. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The day after you record ultimate Steiner brothers, they will be in the yellow and blue jackets. It does not have the Michigan logo for obvious reasons. Add your own does come with multiple heads and Rick Steiner. If anybody notices is very similar to his Jack's classic, the outfit that he's in. So yep. it's a nice the difference is the boots. Nice little callback right there. Very much so. And the Scott Steiner is reminiscent of his Hasbro figure. Of his Hasbro figure, yep. Yeah, so kind of a nice touch by Mattel there to give a little love letter to Hasbro and a little love letter to Jax. Uh, the Rick Steiner, the, the boots are really the difference between those two figures in terms of his outfit. The singlet is exactly the same, almost. Um, a few design differences. But the boots are yellow on the Classic Superstars, mixed colors on the, uh, the Mattel figure. But yeah, Super excited, obviously. We've been talking about an ultimate set of Steiners for how long, Jeff? Ages. Ages, yes. Right? Yes. Easily, ages. Mm -hmm. We've had our nurse and flaps down. We're like, oh, yeah. Just waiting, oh, waiting yeah. for Steve to give us a little tweak. And here we are. Yep. Now, this is where I'm going to say they don't have the rights to the NWA tag titles. Those blue straps that Doom carried, Steiners carried... Uh, Ricky and Robert Midnight Road Warriors, because if I if they had the rights to those, I think that they would have been putting them in with the Steiners. Why didn't they put the WWF tag titles? I don't know. They could have done that. They forgot. So soft goods, uh, Letterman's jackets. Yes. I think that ate up most of the cost of doing this set. That's why we didn't get tag titles with them. Um, it's turning into a way smaller gripe for me because at first I was like, okay excitement overload you know hearts doing red arrows whatever immediately jump onto ringside because they are a ringside exclusive ordered them to finish checkout then on the come down was like man this said to be a lot cooler with two sets of belts yep but then you have to temper that like hey we're getting ultimate steiners there are plenty of great manufacturers out there that do custom tag titles that are going to look I mean, no offense to Mattel's belts at all, but they're probably going to look better than what Mattel could have done anyway. And I think these figures are so good that they're worth spending the extra money on some custom tag titles for. So I, 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 I am griping a little bit, but then it's, it's, it's a super small gripe. Yeah. The soft goods, leather, uh, letterman's jackets, the outfits that they put them in, you get the nod to Jack's, the nod to Hasbro. I think the face sculpts are fine. And they're coming in a set together. And I can't wait to see the box art on this thing, the finished product. I'm super excited. We have Ultimate Steiner figures. And now it's like, this would have been my Master of Puppets for San Diego Comic-Con 2024 from Mattel. Anything we get above and beyond this is just gravy, dude. This, this for me was the meat and potatoes. Anything else is just amazing. Yeah. Uh, those can be found at ringside collectibles as they are RSC exclusives. So make sure you 75 bucks, 75 bucks. Thank you very much. The one thing I didn't like, and I know we got to get to big Josh, but the one thing that I didn't like from the side, it looked like their necks were elongated. I think it was the, the angle that the pictures were taken at. Okay. That's what I'm going to go with. And I think it's going to look a lot different, especially if you display them with the jackets on. Well, when you looked at them with, the, from straight on it looked normal but when they were to the side yes. it looked elongated kind of similar to what ftc did back when they first started doing figures yeah it looked yeah. elongated so i we'll see when we get the figures in hand it's tbd right now but overall yeah. the excitement is there that we're getting the steiner brothers figures oh 100 dude 100 this was the news i've been waiting for i think <laughs> at least 98 percent of our listening audience has been waiting for this as well like this is amazing. An ultimate set of Steiner brothers. It's their w WWF WCW look. And again, you can go buy custom tag team titles for it. So if like, if that's your major gripe, just stop. Yeah. Like you're going to get better titles than maybe what Mattel would have produced anyway. 
So you get some custom titles. You put their Letterman's jackets on. Tag you got WWF tag strap on one shoulder, WCW on the other. That's going to be an awesome looking display right there. Yeah. All right. We got to get to Big Josh. Before we do, I do want to say next week for the Summer of Saint Dude Love, we've got Keith the Bar- the Baracus the Baracus. Oh, the, the Baracus is coming on. The Baracus. <laughs> He's coming on. He's the monster of Missouri. Mazo- <laughs> monster of Midway. <laughs> the, mo- <laughs> the monster of the Midway. Yes. And also <laughs> Rad Chad will be joining him too. They'll be on next week. But we've got Big Josh to get to, Scott. So what do you say we turn it over to him? Let's go talk to him. All right, Scott. It is time to welcome your tag team partner, Big Josh, onto the show. So I'm going to let you do the introductions. Yeah. So... Big Josh, we've known each other for, gosh, I don't know, three or four years now. And uh, your sister dances with Peyton. And that's how we got to meet. And my wife, Shannon, and your mom are really good friends. And I'm good friends with, obviously, your mom and your dad, who in the family is known as Big Josh. And they call you Baby Josh. But when I met you, we had to change that up because there used to be a wrestler in WCW that was known as Big Josh. So me being the wrestling fan, I couldn't call you baby Josh. I had to call you big Josh. And so I don't know if I have to call your dad biggest Josh or bigger Josh. That, Lar- that sounds largest, rude. Largest. La- no. <laughs> Is that proper English? Yes. But tonight we're talking to my tag team partner, big Josh. How you doing, dude? Good. Good. I got to see you last Friday and we got to talk a little bit of wrestling and kind of go over what we're going to be talking about on the show tonight. Are you excited? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, have you ever awesome. watched have you ever watched a Big Josh match from 1990? Mm, no. Okay, yeah, good. You're not missing anything. Yeah, you're yeah, not missing much, okay. man. Roman yeah, he, Reigns he, is way cooler than Big Josh ever was, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Jeff and I were talking earlier. You were born in 2015, right? Yeah. That's the first year that Roman Reigns headlined WrestleMania. Actually? Yeah, he headlined Wrestle it was actually and what's funny, who's your favorite football, football team? Uh, 49ers. He headlined that WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar in the stadium that the 49ers play football in. How cool is that? On oh, your birth year. I think that's awesome. What a weird coincidence, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So next time that you're over at Scott's house, you got to watch that match. It does get a little bloody. It, there is some blood in yeah. it, but it's okay. It's okay. I mean, Scott and I grew up with that, you know, watching spikes get driven into eyes and stuff like that but it's okay yeah. it's a-, <laughs> a little bit of blood never hurt anybody have you seen that match big josh roman reigns and brock lesnar no 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 i haven't seen that one okay yeah you've got to check that one out we'll watch it the next time you come over okay do you remember the first time you watched wrestling no i don't remember you don't remember do you remember like anything like your first match or your have you ever been to a live show yeah once oh which one did you go to I think it was the one where, like, the Usos, they burst uh, the New Day, I think. Oh, okay. Was it in Stockton? I don't remember. Sacramento? Yeah, it could have been Sacramento, too. The the crappy part was uh, Roman Reigns was supposed to be there, but then he wasn't. And as we've made clear, that's, like, his favorite wrestler. And so it was one of those cancellations that we've seen it happen a bunch of times, you know, where whoever isn't going to be there. But, like, he was literally going to that show to see Roman Reigns. I mean, you got the Usos, and that's great, but no Roman. Oh, have you ever seen Roman live? No. You got to go to a WrestleMania. Just don't, not Vegas. Don't go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas is a, a little uh, up there. But anyways. <laughs> I may have been talking to his dad about that the other night. Oh, you were? Uh, you know, got to <laughs> do my part. <laughs> got to do my part. Try to help him out. So, Big Josh, you're an avid collector of wrestling figures, right? Mm-hmm. So do you remember your first wrestling figure? Because Scott and I can remember our first wrestling figure. We go back as Scott and I are very old. Very we, uh, old. We're very old. Um, we remember getting our very first wrestling figures. Do you happen to remember when you got yours? I don't, but I do remember it was like a basic. Okay. That's where you start. Yeah. I don't remember who it was. Ah, okay. So It, it could have been Roman. Okay. And as time's gone on, you've you've grown your collection. What are some of your favorite figures that you've gotten so far? You know, like that new version of Roman, the action figure? New the version? Ultimate Edition? The ultimate yeah. Ed- 
Mm -hmm. Nice. We're going to be talking about that later on too. So I'm looking, yep. for, looking forward to talking to you about that and why that's your favorite figure. What's some of your other favorite figures outside of Roman? Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. Do you remember which Randy Orton? I remember it wasn't like the one where he had red shorts. He like it's like where he had like black shorts and it said it was like goalie, like black and gold. It's a top picks elite. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Oh, that one that yeah. one we're also gonna be talking about later on, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. those are his two favorite figures. So that's why we're gonna be covering those in the nostalgia segment. So are you like full bore into collecting almost anything and everything, or are you just picking and choosing of who you really want? I mean like I just collect like any uh type of any type of WWE figure. Okay. Okay. Are you collecting any AEW ones or just WWE? I think I have like one or two AEW. Oh, which ones? Uh, I remember. I remember what he looks like, but I don't remember his name. Okay. I, th I think Norm gave him those. Oh, that's right. Norm did. Yeah, because Norm had that's given him right. some figures a couple years ago, and I think there were a couple of AEWs. I think it's Hangman Page. That's is one right. of them. Yeah, and maybe Orange Cassidy. I can't remember who else was in the bag, but he did. He gave him a couple of um a couple of AEW figures. I actually, gave him a Junkyard Dog figure too. Whoa. And what I found interesting in talking to Baby Josh or I'm sorry, Big Josh the other <laughs> night, not Baby Josh, Big Josh, is that he's learning a lot about wrestling from the video game 2K24. Oh, OK, because they've got uh, these moments in there from past WrestleManias. Mm -hmm. For example, we were talking about Ricky Steamboat versus Macho Man the other night. So you guys were having a full bore conversation about Steamboat and Savage from three, huh? Yeah. And I yeah. just think it's great that they put <laughs> they put history into the games. Uh -huh. And kids are playing these games and learning about wrestling. I mean, it's not as, as important as like U.S. history, whatever. OK, I'm not saying that, but it's cool that they can during entertainment time. Stop it, Jeff. <laughs> during entertainment time, they can play this game and learn about old school wrestling. Like Big Josh is nine years old. Mm -hmm. He should not. Well, by all accounts, should not know much about WrestleMania three. Right. That was 1987. A lot of years before he was born. But he does. He knows about that Steamboat and Macho Man match, and I think that that's great. Oh, perfect. I've got WrestleMania 3 trivia right here. I was going to ask him. <laughs> How I'm dare kidding. you? I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> you better have prizes to go along with it, and I get the answer for them. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> How many near falls were in that Steamboat? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> what have you learned from the, from the video game? Like, what have you taken away from it from past WrestleManias, from past events? What have you, uh, what have you learned from it? It's really like a bunch of like, um, how like people like fight and then like how they like get into like the WrestleMania, like mm -hmm. how Ricky Steamboat and Macho Man, uh, gone to WrestleMania. Uh, there was Andre and Hulk Hogan. Uh huh. Where like, um, they like talk like stuff about each other <laughs> yep <laughs> that's that's actually true yep <laughs> did it make you want to go watch the old matches too mm, yeah yeah have you okay so have you gone back and watched those matches not yet not yet okay but it's you're planning on it mm -hmm. and see there you go you've got video games actually teaching kids history and i think that that's incredible and by the end of summer, we want a full book report about Andre and Hogan. <laughs> 400 words, no 400, less. 400 words, and also WrestleMania 3, which I'm quizzing you about right here. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Five pages, double spaced. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So outside of WrestleMania 3, have you learned anything else out of curiosity, like any other wrestlers that you've kind of kept an eye on outside of Hogan and Andre, Steamboat and Savage? I remember where uh, Brock Lesnar and... Roman Reigns were fighting, then Steph Rollins cashed in, and then oh. Steph Rollins won? Uh, Seth Rollins did win. That was actually the WrestleMania 31, the year yep. you were born. That was actually WrestleMania 31, where Seth cashed in, and he won the title. And it was a match that was Roman versus Brock. And Scott and I were there, and we hugged each other because we were all excited because Seth was cashing in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that crowd did not like Roman Reigns very much, Big Josh. So when you go back and watch that match, you're going to hear him booing Roman. You're not going to like that very much. Yeah. Just letting you know in advance. So out of curiosity, what is it about Roman that you gravitate to? For example, uh, Scott and I, we grew up with Hulk Hogan in our in our era, uh, other wrestlers as well, Steamboat Savage, also some other names. What's made you gravitate towards Roman? 
I just really saw him like in like in um the other V mm -hmm. and like I just really like liked him. He just became one of my favorites. And that's kind of what Hulk Hogan did for us. And even though Roman may be a bad guy or was a bad guy, you still gravitated towards him, even though the people were booing him, huh? Mm -hmm. And he's got a certain look about him too. Like the dude looks like a superhero, right? And that's kind of what drew us into Hogan and Ultimate Warrior and Macho Man. Those guys, they all look like superheroes to us, you know? So it's, it's easy to see why somebody would gravitate towards Roman. The dude's larger than life. Big Josh, what do you think is going to happen with the bloodline? Right, because right now we saw last week when you were over, they put Paul Heyman through a table, this new bloodline that Roman is not a part of as of yet. What do you think is going to happen? I think Roman, Jay, and Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, Sami Zayn. Okay, okay. I think they're going to come. I think they're going to come. And then they're going to um fight the new bloodline. You think they're going to have a War Games match? Uh-huh. Yeah. I think so as well. We're on the same page here, Big Josh. Okay, so we've got War Games. So we're going to have Jacob Fatu, the Tongans, and Solo versus Roman, the Usos, and Sami Zayn in a War Games match. Who's going to win? The old line. The old, oh, okay. You think Roman's team is going to win? Mm-hmm. I like how you called them the old bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> That's us, Jeff. That's us. We're, <laughs> We're the old also blood. the old bloodline. Big Josh, we are also the old bloodline over here, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> so are you collecting any Uso figures as well? I have the New Day ones, the one where they have like the red hair. Okay, so you have a couple of Uso figures then? Yeah. Got it. And then you're also hunting down, because um, I hooked you up with a Roman shield the other night but you're still hunting for the Seth and Dean Ambrose shield figures, huh? Yeah, I do have like a regular Seth, like when he's not in the shield, and mm -hmm. I have like a Dean Ambrose where he had like a SmackDown um, uh, thing top. Got it, but they're not in the shield gear? No. Okay, so we're still hunting those down, but he's got a Roman in the meantime, and that's a good thing. Now, how do you set up, now do you have a lot of playtime? Do you play with your figures a lot? Yeah. How often do you play with your figures? I play like two or one matches. Okay. How do you set up your matches? I get a random ring and I pick um two two people. Okay. And then I use those and then I use them, then they fight. Okay. Now when you have those two guys fight, do you already have in your head who's going to win? I just kind of like think of moves or what they're going to do. And, and then if I like want them to be like knocked out and win, then uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So we used to, uh, cause kind of going back to our day, you know, we didn't have phones and all that stuff. So we spent a lot of time playing with our figures, but what we would do is we would have a big pile of wrestling figures that mom and dad got us. And then we would reach over and just grab figures and just start wrestling and Sometimes we knew who was already going to win and sometimes we didn't, or we would just sit there and start booking our matches and we would have all the wrestlers laid out on the side and we would start kind of going from there. That's when we would sit there Indian style for about three hours. Easily three hours. I'd actually sit at school sometimes and start mapping out what matches I was going to have that night. Mm -hmm. And then there was always like a battle Royal on the card. And that's where you had just the big pile of figures and you just start reaching in like Royal Rumble style two guys come in and then you just keep adding in just a random reach. Um, so that's why he was kind of asking you, big Josh, like how do you sit at school and think about matches to have with your figures? Or do you just kind of sit down and grab a couple guys and start playing? I just grab a couple guys and then keep and then playing. But then I do do like what you said, where like you do the Royal Rumble and you grab people. But like sometimes I will get like, um, like if I really have a Roman Reigns in a match, I get Roman Reigns. I like have to pick someone else. Oh, that gotcha. Means... Yeah, so he can't be in the Battle Royal and in a match. Yeah. Got it. He can't double dip. Yeah, <laughs> right. No double dip. Roman, Roman Reigns ain't going twice in one night, dude. <laughs> so, Jeff, one of the other things I discussed with Big Josh on Friday night is the prediction for not only war games, but leading into WrestleMania next year in Vegas. Can, can I pause you right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, uh, were you happy or sad when Roman lost the title at WrestleMania? Okay. Sad. Sad. Okay. Well, I know a lot of kids love Cody. 
so I don't know it that's a legitimate question you know I know he's a it's a legitimate question it's not trying to rub it in or anything like it was just yeah ask. your favorite lost how did that feel well no but, <laughs> your favorite lost. well I know I know a lot of people love Cody that's the thing is Cody is one of the most beloved guys on the roster I didn't know if he Josh, really is he can do no wrong I didn't really know if can. Josh was a big fan of his so you know maybe it was like warrior and Hogan to us Scott maybe it was like that got it that's where i was going with not to be a you know what <laughs> so um to lead into wrestlemania las vegas next year i threw this one at big josh just to see what he thought he says the old bloodline is going to win at war games i actually say the new bloodline wins and the reason they win is because the rock comes in and is revealed as the big boss of the new bloodline okay that's the swerve that allows the new bloodline to win then at the Royal Rumble, The Rock books himself into a title match with Cody and ends Cody's story and wins the title. Roman wins the Rumble, WrestleMania main event, Rock versus Roman Reigns for the heavyweight title. I actually love that. I uh, don't know if I love it because you're taking the title off Cody, but as we discussed earlier, this this big boom that's happening in wrestling right now, I think is because of the bloodline. Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice reward for what has become of wrestling because of them. You're picking a good time to get into wrestling, Big Josh. It, it, exactly. Well, this yes. is a this is a fun time. This is very reminiscent of when we were growing up. So oh, very much so. And your favorite is is literally at the dead center of it. All of this is happening because of Roman Reigns and the way they booked him. Is he at the head of the table? See what I did there, Big Josh? <laughs> See what I did there? It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> Oh man. Anyways. So Big Josh, what figures are you hunting right now? What what is on your wish list of figures that you still want? You know the uh, the shield figures and um mm -hmm. uh you know like that you know the one Ren is Romania who versus uh Steph? The no that run Randy Orton. Say that again. The one Randy Orton that versed uh Steph Rollins at WrestleMania. Uh wait, where he was wearing the orange trunks? Was it red or orange? I remember he versed um, Steph Rollins at WrestleMania and then Randy Orton won. Okay, is that where uh, Seth went to do the, the stomp and Orton hit him with the RKO? Yeah. Out of the air? That's okay. the one? Okay, yeah, that was orange. I can't remember which color it was, but yeah, there's definitely... They've made Randy Orton in like almost every single color out there. So yeah, he's he's definitely going to be out there. You really need to watch WrestleMania 31 because that was like a excellent WrestleMania. All it the was really good. All the matches you're talking about were at that show. So you should, you're, And Sting was in it too. Yeah, Sting was in it. I, we need a book report by the end of summer. <laughs> we WrestleMania it. 3 and WrestleMania 31. We're, we're going to... Yeah, res, both WrestleManias. There's going to be a 30-page questionnaire. <laughs> <laughs> Plus trivia. Plus trivia. <laughs> we'll have you back on to do trivia. <laughs> Okay, so you got the shield with it, which is Seth and Dean, because you already have Roman. You're looking for the red or or red trunks, Randy Orton. Who else are you hunting right now? There's like a bunch of Undertakers, but that one Undertaker that versus Brock, and then Brock ended his um streak. Oh, was oh, oh yeah. the streak one? Um, that was the Toys R Us exclusive, wasn't it? Scott? It was, yeah. Oof, yeah. Unfortunately, those old figures cost quite a bit of money in a lot of cases, especially if you want to mint on card. But you're a loose collector, like you you play with them. So you might be able to find a loose one for a decent price. So who else you got on your wish list? Uh, I already have a bra. What about a Cody? You got Cody's? Oh, no. Are you you don't have Cody's? a Cody? Wait, are, are you happy with Cody? Or do you not like Cody? I'm starting. I'm starting to like him. Okay, got it. So you need to get some figures of him so that Roman can avenge his loss from WrestleMania this year. Yeah. 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 Have Cody eat some pins. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> no more eat, story. He doesn't eat many pins in this in this world. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Big Josh, have you gone or started watching any AEW? Uh I'm gonna try to start watching AEW. Uh-huh. And I don't know. I I only know AEW and WWE. I don't remember. Uh, I remember there was like something else, but I don't remember it. There's quite a few organizations out there, so yeah. But like the ones with like major TV deals, that's kind of like yeah, your average viewer. It's WWE, AEW. 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. And then you got TNA like is in third. But as long as I've known him, he's been like full on wrestling and wrestling figures. And it's great. Every time there's a dance competition and Big Josh is there, we get to just sit down and look at pictures of figures and talk what we're collecting. And he's an awesome tag team partner to have. Are you collecting any other figures outside of toy? Uh, excuse me, outside of wrestling or any other wrestling or sorry, any other toys that you're collecting? Transformers, G.I. Joe, anything like that? I'm going to think of trying to get some Transformers Uh huh. and maybe some Ninja Turtle. Oh, there you go. There's quite a few Ninja Turtles out there. So you've got quite a few to choose from. And you got to get a Megatron. You got to get Optimus. I'm definitely getting Optimus. Yeah, there you go. That's the name of my cat. <laughs> Optimus or Bumblebee? Optimus. <laughs> I named him Optimus Prime. His middle name is Prime. Like the hydration drink. <laughs> <laughs> Optimus Prime Tune. Yeah, that's his, that's my cat's name. <laughs> oh, by the way, Walmart has an exclusive WWE Prime bottle now. Yes, I saw that. By the way, are you drinking Prime? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Don't start. Don't start. <laughs> it's a money suck, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a not, huge addiction. Yeah, it's a huge addiction. You feel great afterwards because of the hydration, but it's not worth it. <laughs> It's overrated. It's it's delicious, but it's overrated. <laughs> so we talked about Big Josh's two favorite figures. It is the uh, 2022 Randy Orton top picks. And he also likes the first Roman Reigns Ultimate Edition, mm -hmm. which I actually prefer over the second one as well. Agreed. That was in Ultimate Edition Series 14. And that is our nostalgia for the week. Yep. So Ultimate Edition Series 14, we had Roman and Jeff Hardy. Scott, why don't you go into them? Yep, Mattel WWE Ultimate Edition Series 14 consisted of Big Josh's favorite figure, Roman Reigns. <laughs> Jeff, I sent you descriptions and you went into business for yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to read your descriptions. All right. <laughs> head with hair whipping backwards. Yes, that's the, where the head's wh with the hair whipping backwards. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say nothing of the expression on his face like he's doing the ooh -wah, nothing like that just hair oh. whipping backwards actually your description makes way more sense than head with hair whipping <laughs> no but we're reading yours <laughs> <laughs> and he also came with the smackdown title and a soft goods bloodline shirt <laughs> i can't with you tonight next up jeff hardy and this was jeff hardy in white pants uh, he can, as Jeff eloquently put on the notes, extra yelling head. Yes. And a soft goods Jeff Hardy shirt. Yes. I went into business for myself. You really did. <laughs> you really did. So Big Josh's next favorite is the 2022 Elite Top Picks Randy Orton. So we'll get into that series here. Drew McIntyre. He came with a sword. Sw sword? Sword. No, it's a sword. 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 Hard, hard W. Hard W. Sword. Like cool whip. Right. And a, a sword. Yeah, sword. There. Yeah. Sword. <laughs> and a, a kilt and arm gauntlets. Goldberg. And this would have been his uh, late WWE run where he won the SmackDown title. He came with said title. Also had a gray goatee. Yep. Next up, Jeff Hardy. And he was in teal and yellow face paint. Had a Polly Pocket style shirt. And John Cena, Jeff, this was this. No, what? No. Your what? description says HLA shirt. Yeah. Didn't he have an HLA shirt? That would have been HLR. Oh, Hustle, I... loyalty, respect. Oh, I was way off. Yes. Oh, I was you thinking, were way off. I was thinking of something else. Anyways. I know what you were thinking of. <laughs> yes. This is his hustle, loyalty, respect, <laughs> not hot. Something, yeah, something da, 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 that da, da, da. Eric Bischoff <laughs> talked about. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, Cena came with a soft goods HLR shirt. The HLR was reminiscent of the AWA logo. Also came with a hat and chain. Next up, Big Josh's second favorite figure, Randy Orton, came with a hooded Polly Pocket style cut off sweatshirt. Got two Rey Mysterios in this one. Rey number one had black and pink gear. Second one was gray and blue Batman inspired gear. That was awesome figure. It was really good. And both came with a Polly Pocket style race shirt. Yep. Roman Reigns came with a soft goods head of the table shirt. No title with this one. 
Next up, The Rock. He was in his Attitude Era gear, which would have been a Soft Goods The Rock football jersey. This would have been in black and red. Also came with sunglasses and a microphone, of course. And finally, The Undertaker. And this was Undertaker in his gear from the Boneyard match at WrestleMania 36. So the accessory was a shovel. And that rounds out 2022 Elite Top Picks. All right, Big Josh, we asked you what your favorite figure is in this series. What's your least favorite figure? And why is it Goldberg? (laughs) No offense, Goldberg, if you're listening. (laughs) No, take offense. Stay away. <laughs> Drew McIntyre. Really? Ooh. Even though he came with a sword? You don't you don't like Drew McIntyre? Not really. Oh, okay. okay. All right. You were happy Damian Priest beat him? Mm-hmm. You like Judgment Day? Um no, I just I just uh like Damian Priest. You like Damian yeah, me too. What's gonna happen when mommy comes back? Liv Morgan, I don't have a custody match against um against <laughs> Dominic. I love it. I love it. It's it's Ray and Eddie all over again, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh, thirty years apart or whatever, twenty years apart, he's gonna be in a custody match again. I love it. That's great. I don't know if you know about this, Josh, but back in the day, uh, back in two thousand five, Eddie Guerrero, who was a, a very popular Latino wrestler and Rey Mysterio had a match for the custody of Dominic. Now, Dominic at the time was about your age, about eight Yeah, he nine. was about your age. Mm-hmm. So to kind of give you an idea, this crazy situation was going on where <laughs> they were fighting over the custody of Dominic. So yeah. <laughs> here we go again. What's funny is we're going to be reliving that. You just brought up Liv and Mommy or Mammy or whatever, going at it for the custody of Dominic. So that's kind of funny that you mentioned that. That's great. You've That's got to cool. go back and watch that match, dude. Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio for the custody of... Wait till you see how different Dominic look, looked yeah. when he was younger. It's hilarious. Didn't he, didn't he have, like, blonde hair? Yeah, he sure did. He did. Yep, they yeah. actually made a figure of him. A build a figure Yep. Did Eddie Guerrero get custody? No, Rey Mysterio won. Yeah. Oh, Rey Mysterio? Yeah, yeah, Rey Mysterio won. Spoiler, but still go watch the match, though. I remember when Eddie Guerrero, he ripped um, Rey Mysterio's mask. That was back in 1997. That was at uh, Halloween, Halloween Havoc. Halloween Havoc. Yep, mm-hmm. he ripped he ripped the mask right here. It was one of the best. That's one of the gr- best matches of all time. Just go back and watch that match. You don't have to watch the whole pay-per-view. No, no. Not, nobody wants to subject you to that. Yeah, we, we like you too much to subject you to any WCW stuff. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. If you're going to do an Eddie and uh, Ray match, also do WrestleMania 21. They fought either wrestled each other in the very first match, WrestleMania 21, and it was outstanding. And they were tag team champions and they faced each other. And we were there for that one. Yes, we were. Yeah, it's where I met famous actor David Arquette. Anyways, former WCW champion David Arquette. Yep, former WCW champion. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's so funny that you said that there's going to be a custody match between Liv and uh, Rhea Ripley. <laughs> that's hilarious. I didn't even think of that. Who has been in two custody matches? <laughs> As like the prize of the match. Like, Nobody. There's quite great. a few. There's quite a few wrestlers that haven't even been in one. Dominic has the potential <laughs> to be in two. <laughs> He's possibly in two. Yeah, that's gonna be great, dude. I can't that's, wait. That is hilarious. All right. Uh, so what we do right here is we just read off all those figures, Big Josh. But what we like to do is we also like to read off the eBay listings. So, so now you see how much they're worth. Yeah. By the way, do you keep your figures loose? Do you open them up when you get home, or do you leave them on card? Uh, I opened them up. Oh, you're killing me, kid. Don't I just... do have a, I do have a, a shame is still in the box. Okay, you can open up that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if Scott and I would have left our figures in the box, we'd be multi-thousandaires. So, <laughs> yeah, but we'd have no podcast because we'd literally be sitting talking about carded figures. Yes. <laughs> and what fun is that? You got to talk about playing with them when you're a kid. Well, if you leave them in the cardboard box, they're going to be worth more when you grow up. That's boring. It's overrated. All right, let's get into those eBay listings. The Roman Reigns with the hair whipping backwards. SmackDown title. He whips his hair back and forth. Yep. It's like the Cliff Burton figure from Super 7. Yes. Bloodline t-shirt, last old eBay listing, was June 29th for $24. That is a steal. That is a mucho steal right there. Yeah, yeah. My German is excellent. Jeff Mucho, yeah, well done. 
Thank you. Jeff Hardy, extra yelling head, Jeff Hardy t-shirt. Last sold eBay listing June 30th for $20.50 on eight bids. That's not even retail. No. Jeez. <sighs> Drew McIntyre with the sword kilt arm gauntlets. Last sold eBay listing was June 24th for $24.98. Goldberg SmackDown title last sold June 29th for $15. Jeff Hardy with the teal and yellow face paint and Polly Pocket t-shirt last sold eBay listing June 18th for $17.99. Boy, you can get a lot of these figures for under retail. Yeah, yeah. not Some not bad deals here on eBay for sure. John Chenna last sold eBay listing July 1st for $21.54. Big Josh's second favorite figure, Randy Orton with the hooded Polly Pocket cutoff style shirt. Last sold eBay listing is July 3rd for $13.50. Ray Mysterio, now there was two of them. The first Ray where he's in the black and pink, last sold eBay listing was June 26th for $19.80. The second one where it was Batman inspired gear was July 2nd for $14.99. Roman Reigns, soft good head of the table t-shirt, last sold eBay listing June 24th for $13.99. And the rock in his old attitude era gear, Mike sunglasses, soft goods, football jersey, last sold the eBay listing, May 23rd for five dollars. Five dollars, dude, that's flea market pricing. What give it away at that point? What are you selling it for five dollars for? I will say the one that sold prior to this one sold for 20 bucks, but the fact that this was the last sold mint on card dude. was five dollars. Can't even get a foot long for that. Come on now. No such thing anymore. Yeah, geez. And last figure in the set, Undertaker Boneyard match from WrestleMania 36. Last sold eBay listing, May 27th for $15.60. And that rounds out all of Big Josh's favorite figures and series. So Big Josh, we gave you uh, extensive homework for the end of summer. You've got to, I wish I would have gotten homework like this. You have to watch, Wrestle know, right? you have to watch WrestleMania 3. And you have to watch WrestleMania 31 and you have to report back to Scott. And we're going to talk about all the matches. Yes. So, uh, yeah, (laughs) yeah. He's like, yeah, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Get right on that dork. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, okay, boomers. (laughs) You know, what's great though, is like, I think like back to when we were watching wrestling and big Josh and I were talking about this the other night, we have access to Peacock now. And that is an endless library of NWA, WCW, World Class, WWE, like ECW, you name it. You probably have access to it at your fingertips. But when we were watching wrestling in the 80s and the 90s, we had to make sure the TV was tuned into that channel at that time. And we had that much time for that that show to, to be on TV carved out in our schedule to make sure we could watch it. Otherwise... We missed it. I mean, yeah, you could tape it, but that wasn't as much fun because it was going to get spoiled before you could watch it. So the age that you live in, Big Josh, right now is amazing because you can watch whatever you want, wrestling related, whenever you want. And I always joke about like, what a time to be alive. But honestly, like as a wrestling fan, what a time to be alive. That library that you have at your fingertips is just it's awesome. I love it. And you get to go back and watch Ronnie Garvin matches. Ooh. (laughs) I'm joking. Nobody wants don't, to go back. Don't do that, Big Josh. Don't yeah, do you it. Don't, you don't have to don't do watch, that. No. You don't have to watch Ronnie Garvin. You don't don't watch to. Big Josh matches and don't watch Ronnie Garvin matches. But WrestleMania we, 3 and WrestleMania 31. 30, 31, you do have to watch. So report back to us at the end of summer. We'll have you back on. We need a full-on book report. <laughs> Big Josh, it was fun having you on. It's kind of fun kind of seeing the world of wrestling through someone else's eyes. You know, someone like you. It's kind of fun going back and seeing the world of wrestling, I should say. Um, Scott and I are old heads, so we haven't done that in a while where, we, you know, we watched wrestling with these rose-colored goggles and everything was great. And, you know, we couldn't wait for every like Scott said, we couldn't wait for wrestling to come on at the, you know, Saturday afternoons or Saturday mornings or whatnot. And we had to be glued to the TV. So uh, it's kind of fun hearing your stories about going to wrestling shows and seeing Roman and uh, sorry, I'm not seeing Roman. I apologize. But going to wrestling shows and just kind of seeing the live action like Scott and I did when mom mm-hmm. and dad would take us. So it's kind of fun hearing that, man. Yeah. Thanks for being on, Big Josh. Thank you. Well, Scott, that rounds out the show. Big Josh, we want to thank you again for being on. Scott, anything else? Yep. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Big Lashes 2016. 
Big Josh, thank you for being on and happy toy hunting. All right. And we want to thank everybody listening for episode 441. Hashtag Fig Life. Adios. Fully hosable. Let's go. Jeff and Scott, the Tomb Brothers, busting out the ring. But we don't take it out the box, MOC. Happy toy hunting, we'll see you next week. With the OGs of WFP. Fully posable, thank you all for listening. It ain't no storyline, real life siblings. So everybody go and do your toy spotting. Hashtag Fig Life, adios from the Kings.